Hi guys, it's me. Um, so as you can tell, this isn't a usual video. Um, I've actually only just uploaded my last video where I was talking about plotting and I just got so excited because straight after filming that I got straight to working on the plot outline for book number two. And um, I was just, I don't know, I just got so swept up in the whole thing that I just, I had to show you guys what I've been working on. Um, as I mentioned in my last video, I've been saying that I was gonna like try out a number of different strategies in order to, um, get the plot kind of like outlined and structured properly uh, and I've started on one of those which is the Harmon plot embryo as seen on Rachel Stevens vlog and um, I bloody love it like I feel like it's going to completely transform the way I approach structuring my stories from here on out um, so this is me basically just showing you how that's worked out so yeah this is my writing space not very special, I know I'm on this like dodgy IKEA desk, but um, it's worked up until now. Anyway, I'm just going to show you what I'm working on, so here we go. Alright, so the first thing I want to show you guys is what I've always used to uh, kind of throw down my initial ideas, and that is OneNote, which is obviously free. Um, and I just have like a number of tabs for my own personal notebook. I've also got like a separate notebook which I use for work. Uh, but anyway, these are like things I'm working on. And then I've just got different pages for different sections of my story. I'm going to skim through this really quick because I don't really want you guys to uh, find out too much about what my story is actually about. But anyway, so uh, yeah, that's the first thing I do is just sort of throw those ideas down. Um, but anyway, when I was talking about yesterday, I'm going to turn this around so you can just see. So what I was talking about yesterday in my vlog was uh, that there are three main strategies that I've seen that I think would work for me in terms of plotting a second novel. Um, and I told you that the first one that I wanted to try out was going to be Harmon's Plot Embryo, so that's what I've been working on. Um, so I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Here it is! Ain't that pretty? Um, again, I don't really want you to kind of like read it, I'm going to kind of hover a little bit, but if I focus in here so that you can't read what my story is about. Uh, it's not going to focus. As you can see, it's uh, a circle divided up into eight segments. Um, and what you can also see is here, I've colour coded them, so one and five opposite ends of the circle are also the same colour. And that goes obviously the whole way through. And the reason is because each of these different segments kind of ends up adding symmetry to a story. So that's kind of something that I've been working on and uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about the different segments now so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So section number one is where obviously the introduction to your story where your character is in their comfort zone. Section number two is where they learn what it is that they actually want. Section number three is where they end up landed in a unfamiliar situation. Four is where they have to adapt to that situation. Five is where they get what they want. And six is where they have to pay a heavy price for getting what they want. Seven is when they return back to familiarity. And number eight is where your character has fundamentally changed. Now, as you can see, that piece of paper was really small and it just had basically a line next to each of the segments kind of outlining very generally how each section of the story would pan out. And obviously then needs fleshing out a lot, a lot more. Um, and what I have is an amazing present that I got from my cousin, which I will show you. And it's this fabulous notebook, which is so much more than a notebook, let me show you. So this is the amazing notebook that my cousin got me, and it's actually a collection of different notebooks. There's obviously a spare notebook inside here in that little pocket with some notes and stuff. Um, this is the notebook that I'm working on now. Then there's a divider with another notebook, another divider, and another notebook. And they all kind of get looped through, you see, on this like elastic thing here. And it's really lovely. I got this for my birthday and it's super, super sweet. And she wanted me to use it for plotting. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, now, in this one, I've got some general notes at the front, which I don't want you to read. Um, but then what I'm planning on doing is now that I've done the uh, plot embryo, I'm going to um, let my embryo grow and hopefully get some, uh, <laughs> some more meat on its bones, for want of a better expression. Um, so anyway, here is the first one, so the comfort zone and establishing my main character. So I'm going to use these pages to flesh out my main character, really set the scene for where they are at the beginning of the novel. So that's going to go here. Um, and then the next one is obviously learning that she wants something. My main character is a female, so it is a she. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to be kind of like identifying the problems that she's experiencing Um what she feels like she's lacking in her life, which will then lead on to 
landing in an unfamiliar situation. So this is that classic moment where your main character realizes that everything's changing. Sometimes it's, well, actually more often than not, it's through something that's outside of their control. So that's what I'll be then exploring here is her unfamiliar situation. Then I'm going into how that main character adapts to the situation. So this is them kind of, it's like the fight or flight type moment really, uh, where she's going to have to get used to it. Um, and this is really where your main character tends to show their true colours and, and, you know, gets kind of feisty and strong nine times out of ten. So that's there. Now, plot number five, plot point number five, sorry, is actually one of the more complicated ones. So I'm going to kind of talk about this a little bit. Um, I've written here that it's where she gets what she wanted. but It's also known as the meeting with the goddess moment or the moment where the character kind of finds themselves. And this is where basically everything that's happened up to this point has kind of been out of the main character's hands. And what happens after this moment is where the main character is really taking... Um, the future into their own hands. So this is kind of where something needs to happen, which kind of gives them a moment of epiphany. Uh, and this obviously varies drastically depending on what kind of story you're writing. Um, I'd recommend like kind of looking this up a little bit and kind of thinking about how this would fit into your own story. I'm going to put some links down uh, below for you guys to, to read and see how it would fit to your own story for part number five. But then it leads on to where, you know, your main character has to pay a heavy price. So... I think five and six are very much linked. This is usually where whatever it is they've had to do, uh, whatever choice they've had to make, you know, it costs them something. Um, and this is where you kind of got to explore that a little bit. And you kind of need that low point in your story in order for things to start to get better. So part number seven is where your character has referred... Uh, sorry, your character has returned to something familiar. Now, this could be going back literally to a familiar place or environment, but more often than not, it's a state of familiarity, so where your character actually feels comfortable again. And it might just be that they've come to accept the new situation that they're in, and actually it no longer intimidates them. So if they're in a new world, perhaps their new world now feels more like home than the old world, for example, something like that. And then it will lead to your dramatic climax, which can, you know, obviously, again, very drastically depending on your story but at the end of it your character realizes that they fundamentally changed and they are no longer that person that they were right back at the beginning in their comfort zone and hopefully they have also you know achieved whatever it was that they wanted at point number two that thing that they wanted hopefully they have now gained um by the end but it may not be in the shape or style that they had originally anticipated so yeah, that's that's where I'm at. And then I've kind of also started doing some dates because mine is set in the Tudor period, as you've probably guessed if you've seen the notes that I was kind of letting you see before. So I've just like jotted down some key dates because that's going to be really relevant to my book because it is still historical fiction. So yeah, that's where I'm at. That's what I've been working on. I'm so excited for this new story. I will tell you more about it, I promise, when things are a bit more settled and I've actually started working on the actual writing part of it. Um, but, you know, for somebody who really... I, I really don't like plotting. I always avoid it. Not Actually, do you know what? It's not even that I avoid it. It's just that I'm so desperate to start writing. Like, right now, I'm dying to just open a new document and start working on it. But I'm refraining. I really want to see if this one around, by having a lot more structure and just a lot more thought into the actual outline of the whole story before I start, I want to see if that's going to really help me out. I think it will. I have a feeling it will. Um, so you might think I'm a bit crazy for trying to do two different, like three different plotting strategies before even starting to write. That's probably a bit overkill. But I want to know if... There are aspects of each of them that could end up becoming my own personal uh, approach to uh, plot outlining. I, I don't believe that I'm going to end up sticking to one outline strategy and that's going to be it forever. I think I'm, it's going to be like a constantly changing process. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I've been working on. I'm actually flying to the UK this weekend. It's currently Friday. I'll be flying there on ugh, Sunday morning. And... Uh, I've actually got something planned while I'm in England that I can only do in England, which is going to be relevant to my first book. I'm hoping, if I've got time, to actually go on location and try and, you know, scope out the place that I've set my novel. So I'm going to try and film that for you guys and you can see it, which could be a bit of fun, hopefully, or it could not work or I might not have time to go at all which would suck but such is life. So anyway, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Um, I'm sorry for the kind of serious 
uh, lack of preparation that's gone into this video, but I was just super excited. I wanted to show you guys what I was working on so that you could see a little bit of how I, I work. And yeah, hopefully it was interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments if this was rubbish and you'd much prefer I went back to my more structured style of video, which I'm still planning on doing, by the way. It's not like one or the other, but you know, if you felt like this was rubbish, then just tell me and I'll, <laughs> I'll stop it straight away. But anyway, yeah, thanks for paying attention. Uh, if you did enjoy it, then please do hit like and subscribe. It will make my day. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week.